Earlier, we defined the price elasticity of demand as the percent change in quantity demanded for a given percent increase in price. We can compute this elasticity by dividing the percent change in demand by the percent change in price, and for the sake of convenience, dropping the negative sign. But it turns out that there's a technical issue that arises when computing elasticities in this way. This issue can best be understood with a real-world example. Suppose you're trying to estimate the price elasticity of demand for gasoline by comparing gas prices and consumptions in different countries. As a result of high taxes, the price of gas in many European countries can be as much as three times the price of gas in the United States. For example, let's say gas in the U.S. is $2 a gallon and gas in France is the equivalent of $6 a gallon. So what is the percent difference in price that we should use in the denominator of the formula for elasticity? Well, since 6 is 3 times larger than 2, this would correspond to a gas price in France that's 200% higher than the gas price in the U.S. But if we look at it the other way around, the $2 price in the U.S. is roughly 67% lower than the $6 price in France. A similar issue emerges when comparing demand numbers for gasoline in the two countries. The figure for percent change will depend on the direction of your comparison. So which numbers should we use to compute elasticities? One way to avoid having to make this choice between two different sets of figures for computing elasticity is to use the midpoint method. This is the method used on the AP exam. Typically, we compute percent change in some variable x by dividing the change in x by the initial value of x and multiplying by 100. But as we've seen, this computation depends on which value of x is considered the initial value. The midpoint method gets around this by tweaking the computation for percent change. Instead of dividing the change in x by the initial value of x, we divide the change in x by the average value of x before multiplying by 100. Let's say that when a certain keychain costs 90 cents, the quantity demanded is 1,100. And when it costs $1.10, the quantity demanded is 900. Before the midpoint method, we'd have to decide whether we want to estimate the elasticity going from 90 cents to 110 or from 110 to 90 cents. The midpoint method allows us to sidestep this decision. We calculate the percent change in quantity demanded as the change in demand divided by the average demand. The change in demand is 1100 minus 900 or 200. And the average demand is 1100 plus 900 divided by 2 or 1000. 200 divided by 1000 is 0.2 or 20%. This is the percent change in quantity derived using the midpoint method. Now for price. The change in price is 90 cents minus $1.10 or negative 20 cents. The average price is 90 cents plus 110 divided by 2 or a dollar. Negative 20 cents divided by a dollar is negative 0.2 or negative 20 percent. Price elasticity of demand is the percent change in quantity demanded, 20 percent, divided by the percent change in price, negative 20 percent, which comes out to an elasticity of negative 1. And dropping the minus sign, we get an elasticity of 1. The important point is that with this midpoint method, we arrive at the same elasticity, whether we consider increasing the price from $0.90 cents to $1.10 or dropping the price from $1.10 to $0.90. Cents.